Welcome back, 0K fans, to Now Lives at Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333 and this next match is going to be between North Chile and Gian Lamadeus on La Isla Bonita, which also got a bit of a prettification, as with all the Sprung's little beach maps, or tropical island maps, and this one also looks a lot prettier, which you'd expect, because it would also look prettier, because that was what North, that was what Moose's Loose did to all of those maps, and a bunch of others. So thanks again, Moose's Loose. Anyway... North Chilean G going for the Recon Commander. And Lamadeus going for the Colicubot Factory. I'm not sure what North Chilean G is building. Jump, of course, the building jump bot. You jump into, yeah. That's what she always does. Actually, no, never mind. No, 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 no. Quicksilver, you jump and then build light vehicles. So, I don't know. But yeah, North Chilean G being a bit forward with their opening factory. Which is really unusual on this map. Because normally the natural expansion is here. But no, North Chilean G just jumped down onto this side expansion... And then I guess is going to try to contain the rest of this stuff from this expansion. Or from this opening. From this, from what their main base currently is. While Lamadeus, on the other hand, going for a much more typical main base area of the north, the topmost plateau in the starting location they start at. So North Chilean G going to be slightly intercepted here with a couple pyros coming in. I don't know if Lamadeus is realizing what's happening. And yeah, they pretty much got it first try. I mean, I guess they figured follow where the pyros are coming from. Although they haven't actually found it yet. They don't actually know. They will now... Oh, no, no. Oh, if that defender finishes, that'll completely give the game away. But it does not finish in time. So Lamadeus misses North Chilean G's base. Thanks to North Chilean G being delayed on their defenses. That is the strangest way to avoid getting detected. But I guess that works. However, it looks like it'll be all for naught as the Lotus here won't... Well, it should not be constructed, but the other one's not really alive for long enough. Everything's going to be repaired quickly enough. The metal, the wind generator is going to go down. The metal extractor is fine. The Lotus is also going to go down, the one that's under construction. But you know, some damage being dealt, but not a whole lot. On the other hand, Lamadeus has figured out North Chilean G is up to something. But at the same time, North Chilean G doesn't actually have enough metal extractors nearby to get enough metal. Like, you're kind of expected to get about 10 metal from the beginning. And that's not what North Chilean G is going to get. They're going to get about eight. So, a bit of a shame there. But they do have one of their freakers going, or constables rather, going out over to the southeast side of the map. And that will be the expansion area. That'll be where they start from. So, being very tricksy here. Not trying to make it clear to Lamadeus where they're going. The problem, however, is that Lamadeus is a macro player. Lamadeus is all about just getting as much economy as they can. And otherwise not worrying about it. I mean, that's pretty much how Lamadeus rolls. They just... They have their economy when they need it, and they don't have it when they don't. It's... Which is never. They always have their economy. Why would I even suggest that that's never a thing they have? They always, always have their economy. They don't really care if you're being tricky off them. The fact is, North Chilean G is going to be way behind economically, and Lamadeus is going to consistently get ahead, and it's it's going to be an uphill struggle for North Chilean G. They've only just now gotten their constable over to the southeast side of the map, where they're going to be expanding for real. And now their commander in the main base as well. But... Lamadeus is already five metal per second or six metal per second ahead. That's not going to change anytime soon. They're going to stay way ahead. So North Chilean G able to compensate a bit with Reclam, but yeah, it's going to come down to whether or not North Chilean G can, in enough, with enough speed, actually make up for that economic difference and also make sure the units stay alive long enough that they can deal with what Lamadeus has built and get rid of the units that have been built so that the overall economic difference doesn't end up being a problem. At this point, I don't see that. Pyros are continuing to be built. There's some moderators coming up for North Chilean G, which is good. Given the compositions both players are going for, it seems like they both have an idea of how to deal with the other player. Although, the Rockos might be a bit of a problem. I should point out that this is the version where the Rockos got a bit of a buff, as did the Glaives. So Glaives are a bit cheaper and a bit faster, and Rockos are a bit faster, they fire a bit faster, they have a bit more HP, their projectiles are a bit faster, so, and I say fire faster, I mean fire more frequently, so the overall Clokebot Factory is a touch stronger, but the Clokebot Factory being what it is, a touch stronger can be the difference between garbage tier and god tier, so I'm very curious to see how this plays out. Like seriously, Glaive and Rocco are such a sensitive balance point for units, it's bizarre. Glaive I kind of expect, because they're a raider unit, and those are very early units, and my small changes in micro make a huge difference. But with Rocco's, it's... 
I mean, I don't think it's going to be as sensitive. But still, I feel like the Rocco, lack of a strong Rocco was a big reason why Clokebot felt like a bad factor for the last couple months. Anyway, North Julian G does have the moderator to help deal with the glaze, and moderators can miss? That moderator just straight up missed the glaive. I didn't know that was a thing moderators could do. Okay, they must have gone behind under the hill at just the right time, because I don't know what happened there. So at any rate, Lamadeus basically just setting up around the map for making sure that North Chilangi can't do too much. And North Chilangi already did expand over to the southeast, and it's not a bad position to be in. But as it is, there's no reinforcements happening. If Lamadeus finds out that there's an expansion over to the southeast, that expansion's dead. There's nothing North Chilangi can do about it. And not only that, North Chilean G is already expanding over in that direction. There's some defenses being set up, and that's all Lamadeus can do. And at this point, that's a super juicy target, because North Chilean G can't easily reinforce it, and the stuff they can reinforce isn't all that economically viable. So, or valuable, rather. So at this point, if Lamadeus finds this southeast expansion, their best option would be to kill it. I mean, it'd be the most efficient option. Oh. Wait, North Chilean G... You're not... What? North Chilean G is getting kind of confused. Two times economy? They're, no, the economy's the same. You guys have the exact... Or very, very similar. It's like five metal off. But it's close enough that it's definitely winnable. It's just... Lamadeus has a lot of units on the map. And very few of them have been killed. And those that have been killed aren't obviously relevant due to their being dead. But there aren't very many of them. Most of them are for North Chilean G, who has lost a lot of pyros in this whole fight. And they have a couple moderators and a couple placeholders, but yeah, North Chilean G is fine for economy, or not too far behind for economy. It's getting further and further behind. They're expanding somewhat, but not as quickly as Lamadeus. This is what I mean, though. Lamadeus is a macro player. That is what they do. They've gotten a bit better, they've gotten better, actually, quite a bit better at knowing what 0k units do. Because apparently they used to play a lot of Total Annihilation back in the day, but that doesn't transfer the unit knowledge to 0k. It transfers the economy knowledge. It transfers habits about how to deal with the map and how to approach the game as a whole. But it doesn't tell you build glaives when you're dealing with Rockos or build warriors when you're dealing with Pyros or stuff like that. At this point... Ooh, that moderator not able to do any work, but thankfully for them, another moderator is there and making the warrior's life a little bit difficult. And now dead. Never mind. Making it over. Still Lamadeus with the sides coming in here. That's another smart move. There's very little to defend against this. In fact, if the sides can get past the lotuses, which they aren't even planning to, just going for the metal extractors they can easily get. But if they get the lotuses, that is pretty much death. At this point, North Chilean G trying to screen out the sides. We'll be able to get rid of two of them. And the last one just needs to bypass the Lotus, and it does not do so. And going for the radar tower instead of saving its own life. That's a lot of damage that was avoided right now. North Chilean G should count their blessings that they didn't lose their entire main base, which they would have. Nothing stopped that. That being said, though, a couple sides are going over to the northeast, and this is... Ooh, this might be doable. Like threading the needle on this one. If this Scythe goes between these two Lotuses exactly, I think they have enough room. It's not even clear. So if you look at the amount of room that they have, and then compare that to the space between the Lotuses, they'd have to be threading the needle perfectly between the two Lotuses. And I don't think that's going to happen. And neither does Lamadeus. Lamadeus is waiting for their mainline army instead of trying to sneak in. Oh, no! Never mind! Using their sneakers to actually just break down the wall, which... I wouldn't recommend, for reasons that will become obvious shortly, but it looks like, even with that, thankfully the coordina coordination with the Glaives has made that less of a, of a mistake. And at this point, the Southeast is gone, North Chilean G also losing a fair amount of units over to the Southwest. Managing to get rid of a few Glaives in the process, though, but still. Lama Deus so far has pretty much the entire eastern side of the map. They've taken out the Northeast expansion, or Southeast expansion, rather. They've had the Northeast expansion comfortably the entire game. And North Chilean G, I mean, they were tricky, but that wasn't really worth it. I don't, I don't know why they were that tricky, honestly. 
I mean, it's hard to defend your base if you don't have stuff there to defend it with. Like I said, they got lucky the size attacked the radar and didn't actually go for the back of the base. If they had, like, there aren't enough defenders here, or Lotuses rather, that the Scythe would have had a hard time getting around everything behind here to take out everything in the back. So North Chilean G was very close to losing everything. And still pretty much has. Like, losing the southeast is huge. They didn't expand from there. They hadn't really developed it as a base they could build out from. And, no, this match was not a request. I just looked it up and thought, okay, well, this is not a bad idea. I That's how I usually do matches. I go through the replays, find games, usually matchmaker games, that feature players that I'm aware of are going to be fairly strong, or at least, like, they... S usually I try to have a bit of an LO cutoff, but if I know who the players are, then usually it's because... Okay, kind of comes up with that. Usually it's an LO thing, though. I, I like to show off newer players. I like to show players who I haven't seen before. It's If it's someone I know, I think about it and go, have I shown them a lot recently? And if so, then I try to go for somebody else. Unless there's a request. Requests completely break that. Like, just... Because people who want to see replays, like, that's awesome. I want to encourage that. Anyway. With... That being said, North Chilean G is expanding again. Bit of a stronger economy now. A lot of it being overdrive, still way behind Lamadeus. Now it is a two times economy. That's not wrong. But the sumo with the moderators, oh, they just need more moderators. That's all they need. Sumo moderator combos are extremely powerful. It's just a matter of actually having enough moderators that it'll all work out. And it doesn't look like that's going to be the case right now. What is that... Okay, that's strange. Oh, I see. That's the... No, oh, never mind. No, no, that was, the, that was the Phoenixes. I was wondering, what are all those little bits of red targeting? Is that... Is that, like, predicting where it's going to land? But no, it's not. It, was, it wasn't the Phoenixes coming in here. And that looks like it is going to be GG. North Chilean G with those two fateful letters... Ends the game, and we have Lamadeus taking the win, which kind of came down to the beginning. Like, I don't, I guess it was an attempt at cheese. That really was what it was. Cheese failed, and then the game happened. That's usually how cheese fails in 0k, though. Cheese fails, and the game continues to happen, because it's very difficult to cheese in a way that completely screws yourself over. Like, even when cheesing, you're still setting yourself up in a way that you have something to work with. Usually, or at least most people do. Like, you can go hard cheese in 0k. It just rarely happens. Anyway, that was that. So the last match for tonight is going to be between Anarchid and Kingstad on Vitra. That'll be up in a couple seconds, so stay tuned.